Hello YouTube friends, hope you're all well out there. Thanks for joining me. Now I do love a good vintage item. In fact, most of my friends are vintage, even me dog. Now in this Lightroom Bite Size tutorial, I'm gonna take a digital photograph and I'm gonna give it a vintage vibe. And I'm gonna do that simply by using the tone curve. Now it's really easy and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy it. So stay tuned. Right Milo, time for your walk. He says he's ready. So currently on the screen, I have a lovely photograph of a vintage microphone. Now, to be honest, it doesn't look very vintage, does it? Now that's because it's been shot with a digital camera and digital cameras, although being absolutely marvelous, they do tend to saturate and sharpen. And I want this photograph anyway, to look more vintage. Now to do that, I'm gonna use the tone curves but let's just take a look at some presets just to give you an idea of um, a vintage look. So in my presets, I wanna to nip to these presets I have here and these emulate film stock. So as I mouse over, you can see the type of effect I'm gonna be going for. So that's the before and then in this case, this film stock for, it's just taking away the contrast and just muting those colors, you know, desaturating it slightly. I could just apply that preset, but I wanna show you how to do it with the tone curve. So let me just collapse this panel and we'll make a start. So here is the tone curve. Now it lives just underneath the basic set of tools. And as you can see, we have a window and in the window we can see our histogram and I hope by now you know what a histogram is, but it's a representation of all the lights, whites, blacks, shadows, highlights, etc. in your photograph. And it reads from left to right. And then we have this line diagonal from corner to corner. Now this is where we can start adjusting, putting points on it and dragging and stuff to affect the lights and shadows and highlights, blacks, etc. So in this bottom left hand corner is where pure black lives. And in this top right hand corner is where pure white lives. So it makes sense that if I drag the pure black all the way to the top, we just have a white image. And the other way around, if I dragged the pure white to the bottom, we'd have a black image. So from pure white to pure black, we have all the different ranges of lights and darks and shadows and highlights along this curve. And that gives us great power to be able to adjust the contrast in this image. What a lot of photographers will do is put a point in the center and do a standard S curve. So we just create a little, what's called an S curve because it looks slightly like letter S, doesn't it? Now what that has done is put contrast into the image. So if I did a before and after, this is the before and that's the after, so you can see that it's added some contrast. Now we're gonna do a lot more than that. That's just to show you generally how you can put points on the curve and make adjustments. As well as being able to put points onto the curve and to you know drag points about, we can also use sliders. Now if I just jump to this little icon, expand this window, you can see our sliders. And we have highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. And of course I can manipulate these sliders which will, in this case, affect the shadows and the highlights. Double clicking on the actual word returns it to normal or zero. Um, while this window is open, if I just jump up here, we can see where everything lies along this curve. So we know that pure blacks are in the bottom left hand corner. Then we have shadows, we have darks, we have our general sort of mid range mid values in the middle of all places. <laughs> and then we've got lights, highlights, and then top right hand corner, whites. Now I don't use the sliders. I like to pull the points around on the actual curve itself, but you might find a use for that. You may prefer to do it that way. But for me, I like to use the curve and actually put points on it and drag it about. So I'm just gonna close that window. 
And um, next thing we're going to look at then is this little drop down menu here, RGB. And if I just drop that down, you can see that we have different channels. We have the general RGB ch channel, which basically adjusts the contrast of your image. But then you can actually just adjust the reds, the greens and the blues. Now you may be thinking, well, there's more colors than that. Well, of course there is, but what you've got to remember is that your screen is made up of red, green, and blue pixels. And those red, green, and blue pixels combined together will produce every color from white to black and the millions of colors in between. And um, you just need to know a little bit about color values. And, and as I start to adjust the image, I'll kind of explain that. But yep, yeah, so you can just basically switch to the, let's go to the blue curve. And I can now start adjusting the blues in that image. But also because yellow is the opposite of blue, I can actually adjust the yellows. And that's the first thing I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna put some yellow into this image. So I'm gonna go up to the very top and I'm gonna drag the curve down and I'm gonna drag it to about here. Now, as you can see, it's putting yellow into the highlights. Also, what I wanna do is put blue into the shadows. So I've now put, as I say, put yellow into the highlights and blue into the shadows. Now let's look at a before and after. So it's only subtle so far, but it's beginning to start its journey to that vintage look. So just to recap, if I reset this, now to reset, to right click, flatten curve. That's gone back to the way it was. And so just to recap, going this way, I'm gonna add blue into the highlights because remember we're at the top end of the curve where the highlights live so i'm adding blue into the highlights and as i said i would add yellow because it's the opposite going that way and what i did was i dragged this end of the curve which is the shadows remember where the blacks live and i've added the blue so let's just return it back to my preferred vintage look and there you go so let's move on then um, let's move to the green curve because I want to put some green into the shadows as well. Now I'm going to lock a point here because I don't want anything adjusted above this line. I want it to be all below. So I've kind of put a lock point there. Now if you ever put a point on a curve and you don't want that point there, do a right click and you can just delete control point. But in this case I do want it there so I'm going to put it back. And I'm going to put some green into the shadows because that's making that um, bluish look kind of go like a teal color which is quite pleasing in, in this particular image anyway so that looks pretty good it's getting there isn't it next thing is the red channel and I'm gonna click on the red channel and I think this red area up here is a little bit too vibrant so again I'm gonna put a control point in the center and just drop that sort of vibrant reds okay and also I'm just gonna put a point just down here right now I made a mistake there so right click delete control point because I want to drag right from the corner and um, just put a bit more contrast in there so that's looking really good so let's do a before and after so this is what it looked like before and it's got that I think anyway, it's got that sort of vintage look to it. Now, I'm gonna go back to the RGB channel, which is like the overall contrast, if you like, and I'm gonna lift the, sh the blacks, because if I do that, I start to crush the blacks. In other words, I make the blacks lighter, and that will add to that vintage look. So here we go. I'm just gonna pull them up a bit, probably to about there. And that is looking great. So a before and after. And that's just using the curves. Now there is a tool up here. And if you click on it, it, it will be on the end of your mouse pointer. And you can drag in the image. It's not something I tend to do, but you can pick specific areas. In this case to lighten or darken. Um, let me just try that and maybe darken this area. And there you go. So you can do that. You've got to be really careful because the curve's gone a bit wild. Um, now, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do a control or command Z to undo that. 
And you can do the same thing in the red, green and blue so you can target certain areas, as I say, with this tool. And um, I don't tend to use that much. So I'm kind of happy with that, but there's more I can do to it. And to do that, I'm just gonna come out of the tone curve section and go into the basic set of tools. So now then for some finishing touches. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dehaze the image slightly. So that kind of softens it up. It's, it can be used for various things, but I kind of, if I just drag it slightly there, that's softened that image a little bit. I also want to take the vibrance down. Now, I prefer vibrance to saturation. Saturation will literally just go to grayscale, so I don't want to do that. Just take the vibrance down a touch, not too much. And that's looking great. The last little finishing touch then would be to put some effects in. And I'm going to add some film grain. And film grain, obviously, is going to make it look more like it's been shot with a film camera. So I'm just going to put it to about there. And then I want to put a post crop vignette in. So I'm going to drag this down, which is going to darken the outside of the image. Release the feather so I can see where I'm working. I want the roundness, I want it to be more square and just brought in slightly. And then I can reintroduce the feather and possibly just put and just see, you don't want too much, probably out there. Now that to me looks wonderful. And if we do before and after, you can see that it's pure digital photograph. And then when I, we look at what the, the results of the, the edits with the tone curve, that's what it looks like now. And it looks, it looks great, doesn't it? Proper vintage. During this photo shoot, I took a number of shots and uh, let's see if I can apply the same edits to those other shots. So let's reintroduce the film strip and let's go to this next shot here. Now, that again looks very digital. Could I make that have the same sort of vintage look? Now I'm gonna introduce you to a little trick here. You may already know this, but if you don't, you might find it extremely useful. So make sure that you have the image selected that you want to copy the edits from, and then simply click on the next image. Now it can be anywhere along the film strip, but just make sure that you have this image selected and the next image you go to is the one you want to adjust. Now in this case, it happens to be right next door, but it could, as I say, it could be anywhere. So I'm gonna click on it and then watch, I'm just gonna go over to this right hand side and click on previous. And if I click on previous, it'll apply the previous edits from the last image that was selected. I hope that makes sense. And if I click on previous, there you go. It's applied the same edits to that image. I never did a before and after digital vintage. Let's go to the next image, apply it to there and see what that looks like. And that looks great too, doesn't it? And I can go all the way through them and as I say, make the same sort of edits. Let's try one on there, see what that looks like. Oh, no, it didn't work that time. And of course it wouldn't because the previous image didn't have any edits on it. I have to make sure I have that selected then go to the image that I want to adjust and then click on previous. And there you go, that's made that vintage too, hasn't it? Now there's another way of doing this. Let me just click on this one here and reset it. So I need to go to the history palette and just put it back to where it was. And um, let's go to here. This is the one with the edits and I do need to keep this palette open and I can just click on copy and it will copy all those edits. Now, it's exactly the same as using a previous, the way I've just done it, we're using the previous button, except I can switch things on and off because I might have done some spot removal, I might have done some local adjustments, which I don't wanna carry through to the next image. So I could just, you know, un uncheck these boxes to make sure. So you've got to check all, check none, and then you can switch on the ones you want. Now in this case, I want it identical, so it doesn't really matter. I didn't do any spot removal, I didn't crop it, so I could just leave it like that. And just click copy, go to the next shot, and then just simply click on paste. So that's the other way of doing it too. So whichever way suits, you'll know when you do it. If I would have, for instance, used the spot removal tool to get rid of these two screw holes or wherever they are, 
um, that adjustment would have been carried through to the next shot if I used previous or if I forgot to make sure this was switched off. It was just a little tip for you. But yeah, so that is the uh, tone curve. Now it can be used for multiple things. And I just thought it would be nice to do a little vintage shot. And um, you might find that useful, but certainly play around with the tone curve because it's quite powerful. And it's kind of underrated sometimes um, because you have the basic tool and all those, you know, the HSL and all that type of stuff. But uh, yeah, so that's my little introduction to the tone curve. Ah, you're back. Now, as you can see, the tone curve has got loads of possibilities. So if you enjoyed the video, put a thumbs up, think about subscribing if you haven't already done so, and maybe consider clicking on that little bell icon to be notified of further uploads. But above all else, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next upload. Bye for now. Take a photograph and make the moment that stay.